Prokofiev, child prodigy, writes his first piece at five, his first opera at nine, The Giant, but not too lucky, plays catch up with Stravinsky, who is nine years his senior. Stravinsky born in 1882, Prokofiev in 1891. He is commissioned by Diaghilev to write a ballet in 1914. He's playing catch up. Diaghilev rejects it. He turns it into the Scythian suite, beginning just heard. Second ballet with Diaghilev is successful, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. He is back in Russia. He writes his first symphony, the Classical Symphony, 1917. The Russian Revolution is breaking out, and it is actually probably the first neoclassic work by a major composer, anticipating Stravinsky's move, which is either the next year with Histoire du Soldat or 1920 with Puccinella spends most of his time out of Russia post-revolution by permission, achieves a fair amount of success in the West, although not with his operas. His first premiered in the West, and it took a while too, was The Love for Three Oranges. Boy meets three oranges. They're princesses inside. He has been condemned to love them by uh, an evil witch, Fata Morgana, who has slipped on a banana peel and caused the prince to forsake his hypochondria. When he opens the oranges, two of them die, he's in the desert. The third one is only revived because the audience comes and throws water on them. It's that kind of an opera, transvestite nurse too, gotta love it. That doesn't work. He also writes an opera, The Fiery Angel, The Flaming Angel. Girl meets angelic deity, evil or good, hard to know. Other boy, mortal, follows her around. Finale, an orgy in a nunnery. What's not to like? And it's not successful. Ultimately, he reconfigures that, too. That's a theme in Prokofiev, these rejiggerings, reusages. And it becomes his third symphony, which Sergei Kusevitsky, the guy that commissioned uh, Bartok's Concerto for Orchestra, eventually characterizes the greatest symphony since Tchaikovsky's sixth. And he might not be far off. We'll hear just the beginning. It's got a little blues motif as Mi fa so me re do and a bit of Byzantine chant and then a little bit from the development. Four themes being developed, contrapuntally one, a stretto overlapping itself. Wow! As you can hear, quite modernist. Eventually he gets homesick, uh, he feels like maybe he'll have more success in the revolutionary new Russia, and by the time he goes back and settles for good, Stalin cracks down. Prokofiev is moving towards a new simplicity. This is finally, you know, he was just kind of a taste of a neoclassicism early. Now he's finally going to a true neoclassicism, and amongst his first works under the totalitarian regime, Peter and the Wolf. Is totalitarianism good for some composers? Peter's theme. Totally neoclassic. There's a, even an Alberti bass uh, coming for Peter's theme, light motifs in the Wagnerian sense, and we have so, do, mi, so, lo, so, mi, so, la, ti, do, so, mi, do, re, me, whoops, C minor, and then 
that might be harmonic minor. And uh, what is that? Augmented fifth going on there? Otherwise, minor six. And he's changed key. Peter metaphorically jumping over the fence. Prokofiev did write his own libretto for Peter and the Wolf. And we'll be hearing the Disney version, which is close. Disney names the animals. And this is a through line of Disney movies inspired by great 20th century Russians. We've already heard, actually, from Fantasia 2000, the Firebird excerpt way back, and also the Rite of Spring from the original Fantasia, and now this version of Peter and the Wolf, Disneyfied. You'll hear the bird's theme sometimes turns into variations on Peter's theme in a kind of a flourishing way. The duck really quacks, I can testify that, very low, very awkward. The clarinet in G major, very spare accompaniment. I think it's just string bass, maybe, maybe, maybe a little percussion in Disney, yes. G major second inversion. So do me, so do ti. So do me, so fa, mi, do, re, mi, re, ti, do, re, do, wa, ti, do. Grandfather, the old bassoon, B minor, uh, like this, perfect fifth. <laughs> notes and appoggiatura is very dissonant. It, it's fulfilling the letter of the law but not the spirit. Appoggiatura should be gentle but uh, 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 bad Peter. And of course the wolf and we've got G minor something like this. I'm doing this kind of by memory. And here's a bite. Neighbor tones. A dissonant chord. It's really you know oddly kind of a, a Five theme sonata allegro, those five themes being Peter, the bird, the duck, the cat, and grandfather, and then the development, a new theme, a la Beethoven's Third Symphony, and that would be the wolf, mixing it up with everybody, and when the recapitulation comes along, we've got yet another theme with the hunters, which somehow is never acknowledged at the beginning of Peter and the Wolf. What's this we see? The Hunters, Misha, Yasha, and Vladimir. That's Vladimir in the middle. Well, certainly success, plus seven symphonies, and then he dies. We'll hear an excerpt from The Marvelous Six. The fifth is also totally great, the second movement in particular, but I don't have a great, great recording, at least video-wise. And unlucky to the end, he dies the same day as Stalin. And everybody pays attention to Stalin at front page headlines, book off your little announcement, and his body has to lay in his home decaying for a couple days during the ceremonies for Stalin.
the American Fair Day Grofe, kind of a one-hit wonder, wonderful piece though, Grand Canyon Suite, the opening morning, which seems to be a through line from Grieg's Morning from Peer Gint, the on the trail, onomatopoeic, word painting music with double counterpoint, and then one of the greatest storms since Verdi's Rigoletto. Following that, we heard another, this is a beginning of a through line, this will be train music, uh, an early example, Pacific 231, that's the name of this particular engine, and that is by the Swiss composer Arthur Honegger, who is one of Les Six, a French group sort of vaguely put together, press, press release style from Jean Cocteau, who's an all-around man about town artiste, with kind of a godfather as Eric Satie. The probably most important of Les Six are Mio and Poulenc. We'll hear Poulenc just in a little while, and we'll hear more Mio in the exam. And matter of fact, this piece a little bit longer, La Création du Monde. This is an African creation, and it'll be a jazz fugato. And how about this for another manifestation of a blue scale? Do, do, re, do, me, do, do, re, do, me, me, do, could be fe, too. And then, so, la, so, te, la, so, me, me, do, ti, te. And so, overall, you get, do, re, me, me, so, la, te. And then, maybe that's just passing, ti, do. Microtonal piano music from Alois Haba, someone who dedicated his basically his entire musical life to what uh, Philip Glass would have characterized as sounds out of tune, doesn't it? After that, uh, we're going to hear a little bit of uh, Hindemith. Hindemith used to be considered amongst the greatest composers of the 20th century. I mean, he's still great, but the big three would be uh, classical music would be Arnold Schoenberg, Igor Stravinsky, Bela Bartok, and a lot of times you'd hear a fourth as Hindemann. His star has kind of fallen. He falls out of Germany uh, because of, uh, you guessed it, Nazism. His wife is partially Jewish, and so they're off to America. This may be a little redolent of America. And this is the jazz fugato in the second movement of one of the longer named pieces around, Symphonic Metamorphosis on themes of Karl Maria von Weber. This would be, a, a von Weber was a contemporary of Beethoven, a slightly young contemporary. I grew up thinking it was metamorphoses, and that was you know, plural metamorphosis, but evidently it's the singular. And we've got do, te, so, me, do, te, do. 